Bible tells of a time when the Midianites, a wicked and warlike people, came like a plague of grasshoppers and swarmed over the land of Israel. The Midianites just took over the land. And hopelessly outnumbered by their enemies, the people of Israel left their homes and fled for their lives into the wilderness, leaving most of their possessions behind. Living in the wilderness often meant being hungry and cold. And the Israelites had a real struggle for existence. The rich people became poor, and the poor people became destitute. Israel as a nation was poverty-stricken. And they cried to the Lord to deliver them from this miserable existence. We read in the Bible that the family of Gideon was one of the poorest in Israel. And Gideon was the youngest son. That, according to custom, made him the least important. So Gideon was used to taking orders and to plenty of hard work. When Gideon was told by an angel of the Lord that God had chosen him to deliver Israel from the Midianites, Gideon's reaction was much as we might have expected it to be. Me? I'm supposed to deliver my people from the Midianites? Gideon felt sure that a mistake had been made. Gideon explained to the angel that his family was poor, and being the youngest son, he wasn't an important person at all. But the angel told Gideon no mistake had been made. Gideon was the one God had chosen, and God would help him if he would do as he was told. So on the basis of his personal faith in God, Gideon started to work. The first thing Gideon did was to organize the men of Israel and get them ready to fight. And all in all, there were 32,000 men. But when God said that was too many, Gideon spoke to his men and ordered those who were afraid to fight to leave the army and go back home. When Gideon gave his men a choice of whether or not to fight, many of the men left the camp. Even though they knew that God had promised victory to their leader, they also knew that the Midianites outnumbered them four to one. Gideon's new army was much smaller than before, yet it was stronger. These men were not afraid to fight. But would courage make up for lack of numbers? Now Gideon had only 10,000 men, and God alone knew how such a small army could conquer an enemy far more than 10 times their number. Gideon was beginning to realize the true meaning of trust in God. But God was preparing another test of Gideon's faith. And when Gideon talked to the Lord about the size of his army, he got a surprising answer. The Lord said that 10,000 men were still too many. There was only one thing for Gideon to do, and that was to trust and obey. At the Lord's command... Gideon brought his men down to the water and told them to drink. Most of the men bowed down on their knees and drank right out of the stream. And the Lord told Gideon to put these men aside in one group. Three hundred men lapped the water from their hands. And the Lord said, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thy hand. Let all the other people go. Now Gideon would face unbelievable odds, 450 to 1 in the enemy's favor. One thing was crystal clear. Unless the Lord performed a miracle, Gideon and his 300 men were facing certain death. In the camp of the Midianites, the midnight hour was the time for changing the guard. It was a noisy affair, and that provided a wonderful opportunity for Gideon. While the Midianites were changing guards, Gideon and his men carried out the first part of their plan. As far as the Midianite guards were concerned, there was nothing surrounding their camp but the emptiness of the night air. Little did they realize that Gideon and his men were stealing through the darkness on a very peculiar mission, each one carrying a pitcher in one hand and a trumpet in the other. And hidden within each pitcher was a lighted firebrand. At last, every man was in position, waiting for the signal from Gideon, ready to do exactly as their leader did. Then, Gideon blew on his trumpet. He broke his pitcher. He held high his torch and cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon! <laughs> all around the camp of the Midianites, the 300 men did as their leader had done. The Midianite guards 
were struck dumb. In a matter of seconds, the camp of the Midianites was a scene of fear and confusion. They thought a great army had taken them by surprise. Their entire camp must be surrounded. Where could they go? What should they do? Like a herd of wild animals, in utter panic, the Midianites began to stampede. Suddenly, in the midst of all this confusion, Gideon's men blew loud and long on their horns again. Then, a strange thing happened in the army of the Midianites. Every man turned blindly on his neighbor and began to fight one another. For the Lord caused it to happen. Gideon drove the Midianites clear out of the land. And they never came back again. And the Lord gave a tremendous victory to Gideon because he believed in God enough to let him do it. Gideon learned that where God is concerned, believing and doing go together. But more important still, he learned that one man multiplied by God's power equals victory no matter what the odds. The Bible says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me.